Hello, I'm Susan, an assistant curate at Doncaster Minster. And during this time of lockdown, albeit with some restrictions lifted, I'd like to share with you some prayers, a Bible reading and a short reflection from my home. Today is Trinity Sunday, where we remember and celebrate God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And I'll say a little bit more about that later. But today we begin with our special prayer for Trinity Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm now going to read the Bible reading set for today, which is from St Matthew's Gospel, from chapter 28. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. People have always wondered who God is and what God is like. Although God, of course, is beyond our understanding, People down the ages have glimpsed and discerned something of what God is like. Christians understand God to be a God of love, who created everything and continues to create and sustain all life. But more than that, we believe that this loving God wanted to identify himself so closely with human life in particular that he became a person, Jesus. And more than that, that the Creator and Jesus together sent the Holy Spirit to live with us, to bring God near, and to bring the risen Christ present with us, here and now. In these ways, God couldn't be more close to us. So although God is mysterious, and beyond our understanding, he does make it possible for us to know him and to know his love. God the Creator, God the Person, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit are not three gods, but all one God. One God relating to us in three special and different ways. We have learned this about God through reading the Bible and through our own experience and the experience of others, particularly the saints. In the Bible, at the beginning of the Old Testament, we read how the ancient Israelites understood God to be the Creator and how when creation was first initiated that the Spirit was present, hovering like a bird. Later, the New Testament writers, for example St John and St Paul, tell us that their deep understanding was that Jesus was also with God the Creator right at the beginning, but more than that, that all creation was made through and for Jesus. We struggle to grasp all this, but it conjures up for us the lovely image of a flow of action and gifting between the three persons of God, 
an equal interacting and sharing between them, the relationship between them giving rise to more creativity, more giving and more love. When we think of God in this way, we call him God the Trinity, Trinity meaning three, that there are these three intertwined aspects and qualities of God. There I said him, we call him God. As God is neither male nor female, God is not strictly speaking he or him. We could equally call God she or her, but for ease of language we generally refer to God as he or him. When we are thinking about the overlapping and flow of creativity and love between the three equal persons of God, the Trinity, we realise that God is not a static and fixed God, but dynamic, that there is an eternal flowing, giving and loving relationship between the Creator, the Son Jesus and the Holy Spirit each having a particular role within the whole magnificence and omnipotence of God. What this means for us, all of us, people and animals and the natural landscape of this living planet, unique in our vast universe with its teeming life, is that God has an intention and a purpose for this planet, for us, for all his creation, and that is that we know him as he intimately knows us. And knowing him through Jesus, the Son of God, through the Holy Spirit who brings God near, we know his love. Falling short of being the people God would like us to be, as we often do, we also know his forgiveness. Through our relationships with others, we are given ways of expressing love ourselves and given the opportunity to forgive also. God lives in us and inhabits the world and God's intention is that we are a way of showing God's love in the world. All the many acts of kindness and compassion and sacrifice that we have shown one another during this pandemic are ways that we have reflected God's love to one another. And all the sadness, sorrow and grief that we continue to experience we know is also shared by God who in Jesus suffered all the things that we do. If we want to know what God is like, we need look no further than at the life and teaching of Jesus, who showed us exactly what God is like, and continues here and now to lead us by the hand to God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is our God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. May we all be comforted, strengthened and delighted by that in these challenging and uncertain times. And now for our final prayers and God's blessing. Loving God, we pray for all who are ill with the coronavirus or any other illness. We bring to you in our hearts all those we know who are ill, physically, mentally or emotionally. And ask that you will surround them with your healing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this town of Doncaster for all who live and work here, for all those working to help others, the suppliers, drivers, shop workers, doctors, 
nurses and other health professionals, the emergency services, council staff and many others. We pray for all voluntary workers, food bank organisers and people helping friends and neighbours. We pray for those who haven't got enough money or who face financial or job insecurity or who haven't a home. And we pray for all those who are living in unhappy homes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all the congregations, church communities and clergy not able to be together at this time and for the leadership and spiritual guidance of church leaders. For Sophie, the Bishop Designate of Doncaster and Pete, the Bishop of Sheffield and all those working with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the departed for those who have died from the virus and from other causes, praying that they might, may now rest in peace and rise in glory. We pray together now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And now for God's blessing. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for joining me for these prayers and short reading.